Many parts of East Anglia suffered as a month's normal rainfall came down in one night. In Kent, the River Medway burst its banks yet again. Coastal areas are on alert for floods, especially when storms coincide with high tides. From the air, it's clear vast tracts of land are impassable. Army lorries ferried passengers between the two halves of Worcester, divided by floodwaters. The River Eden burst its banks this morning and turned the town centre into a torrent. These days, the weather is always in the news. It's hard to believe that a civic centre like this could be brought to a standstill by flood water. But serious flooding is a risk faced by over two million homes and businesses across England and Wales. A risk that turned to reality here in Carlisle in 2005. Carlisle entirely cut off by rising flood water and within hours an entire community was under siege. Now we can't control the weather but with the right information we can reduce the impacts of flooding on people and property. Indeed, one service provided by the Environment Agency seeks to do just that. It's called flood mapping. They have been developing flood mapping for years and now it's freely available on the internet. By simply typing in your postcode, village or town name, the map will show whether your area is at risk from rivers or sea. The map represents the most accurate picture of flood risk ever produced. Great. No risk where I live. But not everyone's so lucky. Hello, Hello. Edna. Hi. Hi I'm Morris. Hi. Hi. Do come in. Wow. This looks very new in here. It must have been uh, redecorated recently. True, true. <laughs> it needed it. What was it like when the floods happened? Um, the first knowledge I had of it was someone rang me to see if I was all right. And as I answered the telephone here, uh, I could see that the water was against the glass. From the river over there? Yes, yeah. and at that point it jetted through the gas fire. Wow. And spurted through the skirting boards and oh, rose approximately to my waistband and above the television. Oh, and what damage did it do in your dining area here, Edna? Uh, tell me about that. The damage in the dining room was actually more serious because this is the room, really, that I had a, a Welsh dresser and it held all the important papers like your birth certificate, yeah. insurance. There was my born china I'd been given as wedding presents. Mm. Uh, so actually the things that were destroyed in this room were very important to me, yeah. yes. Um, and when they, when they came in to fix things, was it just a question of new wallpaper or was it more serious than that? It was much more serious. They literally took it back to... Um, the uh, breeze blocks, everything went, the yeah. floors. And that's, um, that's more or less where we're standing now, isn't it? Looking yes, that's the right, window. we're literally there. Look, looking back, did the thought of possibility of a flood, did it even enter your head? Yes, yes, but of course it wasn't going to happen to me. What do you think of, of flood maps that tell you what your risks are? I think now in the light of weather conditions, etc., it's particularly important. Well, it couldn't be easier to use the flood map. However, floods themselves are incredibly complex. So you need a vast amount of up-to-date information to predict the risks accurately and to manage them. Collecting that data requires expert knowledge and not a little technology. Chris, the floods are down there. What are we doing up in the sky? Well, Lawrence, from the aircraft, we can cover a huge area quite rapidly and gather a lot of data in a short period of time. It's quite complicated to go through here in the air, so we'll have a look at it when we land back on the ground. Well, we've certainly got a lot of technology here, Chris. How does it all work? Well, this is state-of-the-art technology that um, the Environment Agency is one, one of the first organisations to actually use. Yeah. The uh, yellow line represents the flight line that we would be flying at this present moment. The green area is the area we've covered already and these areas up here are the next flight lines to be flown. And how do you actually take the measurements? Well, the, the laser power supply generates uh, laser pulses which are fed via fibre optic cables to the sensor head at the back. The time it takes the pulse to reach the ground and return can be used to measure the distance between the aircraft and terrain, and from that we build up a, a map from that. And how accurate is that? How, how much resolution can you build in? Typically we gather two metre spot spacing along terrain, but we can actually achieve up to 25 centimetre spot spacing for higher, higher definition work. Having state-of-the-art technology is one thing, but there's no substitute for a bit of old-fashioned legwork. 
all 80,000 kilometres of it. We've seen the uh, aerial surveying operation, which isn't quite so wet. Uh, what kind of information can you add in there? What, what do you do when you get their map? Uh, we fill in the detail, really, using traditional surveying techniques. Uh, it gives a greater accuracy uh, that we need when we're, when we're working along flood banks for the actual crest height of flood banks and, and channel depths and things like that. I say you brought an Ordnance Survey map with you. Um, we actually use the Ordnance Survey as a partner organisation and that we you use these maps to put the flood map on so that people can recognise where they are on our internet site. Uh, and what kind of local data can you take into account to supplement the aerial surveys that we've seen? Uh, we need all sorts of uh, additional data and in fact we're standing on one of our gauging stations in order to be able to predict where where the, the flooding will reach we need to, to measure flows on a constant basis. We also use this station to to monitor levels of in times of flood and from this station we're able to, to warn the public when it gets to a certain height and, and that we think flooding may occur. And what are you doing on the other side? Uh, what's the work you're doing there? They're what you would call hard defences in that because the properties are so close by them we've had to build them defences as close to the river as you see them. Uh, well I think we've learned now that we, we try and set defences as far back from the river as we, as we can put them. In effect we're, we're if you like making space for the water over there. Do these defences, do they show up on the maps that people can see on your website? They surely do. Uh, we build and maintain these defences so we know where they are, we know the, the level of uh, protection they offer to these properties situated behind them. The huge amount of data collected by aerial and ground survey teams is just one tiny part of the process of producing the Environment Agency's flood mapping. Once assembled, the flood map is passed to the Environment Agency's web team, who compress the data to a manageable size to put onto the internet. Steve, can you, can you show us how the website map actually works? OK, so um, I've typed in an area called Two Gates, and you can see the dark blue here, which is a 1 in 100 chance of flooding, and then there's light blue also, which is uh, for an extreme flood. And so if, if I lived in that area, how would I find out what my risk was? So supposing you lived around here somewhere, you can click Learn More and then click on the map, and here it's come up with Significant. But if I lived e even only a street away, the risk might be different. Yep, we can click in there, and it's come up with a moderate. I mean, we all know that maps go out of date. Yeah. How often can you keep these up to date? So we have to refresh these uh, every quarter to make sure that the data on the internet is always the most current data available. Can I get this information from anywhere else? Well, there are other companies that use flood maps, but they tend to use them for their own specific business purposes. So really, the, the Environment Agency's flood maps are the best available. Anybody with internet access can go onto the website and they can find out their own risk of flooding. Local authorities and public bodies are allowed to use the data free of charge. For example, to ensure there's no inappropriate development in the floodplain and to plan how they'd be able to respond to an emergency when there's flooding. Some commercial organisations use the data under licence, for example, to provide searches for people buying houses. With the threat of climate change, there's never been a greater risk of flooding across the country. The difference between being ready for a disaster and being a victim of one is fast, accurate, accessible information. The difference could be a visit to the Environment Agency's website and a look at your flood map.